at Bluebird Group, we started the thinking in uh, about around late 80s already because on that time we were looking into po other possibilities of changing the petrol, the one that we're normally using, to CNG. So we were actually the first company who imported CNG from New Zealand late 80s. So we started thinking about this in late 80s. But the biggest problem we had on that time was the in, uh, infrastructure. It was very uh, much more expensive to build uh, the CNG filling station compared to the normal petrol station. Yeah, and then also the supply, we didn't get the guaranteed continuous supply of the CNG. So those, those two things are mainly our, our problems. And also on that time, because this is late 80s, right? So technology-wise, it's not that advanced. So uh, the tank and everything, the capacity, so our drivers still need to do a uh, mix. So they still need to use the petrol and the CNG. But it helped already on that time. But um, because of the lack of, in of infrastructure, our drivers has to line, had to line long queues, so they didn't, they didn't really like it, and the supply was not consistent, as I mentioned. So that's why we terminate the whole project. Uh, in the board, we look for ideas. Okay, how do we, how to best implement these ideas? And then we gather some information, and then we make a pilot project in one of our depot. And then we check on the data, uh, how reliable it is, and how it e easy it is to implement, and things like that. So we, we tried several types of systems. And now I think we're, we're finding one that we can implement. Uh, so we uh, have the project uh, done in one of the depot and then we now decide uh, to look into possibilities of implementing it in our new depots because that would be the easiest way because every time every time we increase our uh, fleet we normally add another depot We're actually looking into different possibilities. Uh, we're looking into hybrid, for example, but uh, the hybrid is still very expensive. And if you don't get the tax uh, compensation for getting the hybrid in and use it as a public taxi, then it's going to be very difficult for us. It's 5,000 rupiah for flag fall, right? It's 50 cents. So uh, investment-wise, it doesn't make sense unless we got tax benefit for it. And uh, for the other alternative solution of, uh, for the petrol, like the CNG and things, if the government can put a really good infrastructure and continuous supply, then we're ready to do that. Because we did a lot of research for that, the safety of the CNG and things like that. Why did we choose CNG instead of LPG? Because we think CNG is safer in a way. And so we, 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 we have done a lot of studies for this. Petrol is to about 20 to 25% cost from our revenue. So if we can reduce, that's what we've been trying to do, the cost of the petrol itself, then of course we can increase our profit. But then again, if the investment to buy the type of car, for example, like hybrid, the one that I mentioned, is much more expensive, then it would reduce our profit again. So yes, uh, petrol is one of the way. And another way is the spare parts. By doing a really good maintenance, we can also manage the cost of our spare parts. And that uh, indirectly helps the environment also. If we maintain our engine regularly, then the, as I mentioned, the, C the CO gas is managed and that helps the environment. We need to uh, do more work to help the, our driver to understand the importance of saving this environment and what's going on in the world. Because I think for the limited uh, knowledge that our drivers have, I don't think they, they think about these things as much as we want them to. So we're going to, we're planning. We actually have, for example, like using, because we also provide free water for them. So, and they use, their own water bottle so they don't have to throw every time. So we actually help them in uh, teaching them in doing that also, but maybe we should do more. Part of our dialogue with our drivers to increase their awareness also is to 
One of the training that we give is about economical driving. In economical driving, we teach them how to drive economically. So meaning that how it indirectly it will save the petrol and also the spare parts. And how it's as simple as how, when you press your brake, when do you change your gear, or when do you press the, you know, all of those things. And that resulted, uh, especially during the economic crisis, uh, we have managed to prove that doing these trainings help us in reducing the cost and help us in reducing the petrol consumptions because, just because of the driver behavior. So that thing, I think, is something that we can also increase. We try to increase the capacity of a taxi. So now that we have the Velvire, so it can fit more than just three people in the taxi. Because based on, on our market research, there are a lot of passengers uh, travel together more than three people. And more than three people in a regular taxi is not convenient anymore. So that is one of the easier uh, business plan that we can do. I think most of the people in our board, they are aware of these environmental issues, but I think an education, uh, training, or uh, more knowledge uh, transfer, I think would, be, would always be good. I mean, learning is always good, learning new things. And it will give people better understanding. And with better understanding the issues, then they would have more passion toward it. I think that's, that's very important. Yeah? But uh, all this time, I think we managed to look into this as an environmental problem, and how can we do it and with still uh, calculating the business side, as, as you mentioned. So the topic that we put in normally is, OK, how do we reduce our costs by doing good things? So using that topic then the discussion becomes easier in the boardroom. The support that we need from the government, yeah, I mean, number one is the infrastructure. If we are going to change to an alternative petrol, then uh, the government have to support in two, two ways. One is, is the petrol uh, or the filling station itself. And then number two is the supply, to make sure that the supply is continue um, it's, and consistent and, you know, and reliable. I think that's, that's very, very important. And for the type of car itself, for example, like hybrid, and if we can get a tax reduction to import the hybrid cars, or even if Indonesia can make their own hybrid cars, that would be really good for us.